24 artists showing in this space, and I think it might be one or two more by now, um, over the next two years, each artist showing for months. And this interview is part of the painter to painter interview, which uh, every artist will do to the previous artist. So I'm, I'm the previous artist, and I'm actually interviewing Margaret here, and Margaret is going to interview the next artist. Uh, and as Margaret already said, it's part of a much bigger project amongst having many more shows in the future, quite long term, getting our work into collection, getting um, a painting on the map in a quite a different way, mm. and by actually getting a... Hello. 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 It's Marguerite. Marguerite. Yeah, Marguerite. Hello. Hello. I'm just starting with the interview. Yeah? Yeah. Um, also, Marguerite. <laughs> is uh, to have a publication at the end of this um, series, but the main thing is these interviews will go online almost a month just after this interview. So uh, I'm really thrilled that we've got some audience because some interviews are actually without an audience. And I feel, I really feel having an audience here, having people listening to it, it really creates a completely different atmosphere and brings the best out in both of us. Um, so this is just a sort of introduction to it. The idea is I'm going to ask uh, Marguerite questions, A, about the exhibition itself, and then I will move on to the painting itself. Um, and that will last about half an hour. These questions about half an hour, 40 minutes, and then I would like to open it to you. If you've got any questions that arise out of, the, the, of Marguerite's questions, but also do ask a question in between as well. So this, um, interview will be transcribed, will be transcribed, um, and then put online, uh, which also is a really interesting experience for each of us to uh, be in an interview, but then also see how it's being processed and what it's like reading an interview. And the idea is that the interview will be um, transcribed as real as it is. You know, it won't be edited much because I feel otherwise a lot gets lost uh, uh, in the process. Um, <coughs> Yeah, um, as Marguerite already told you that it's been started, this project by Robert Priceman and by Simon Carter, both of them painters in their own right, who felt there's not much of a voice for painting. Although I feel there is quite a lot going on, but it is like this project, it's just in pockets. Mm. And this is one other pocket, but a really interesting pocket. And I'm so glad I met you and your work because of this project. Um, Having seen your work online and having come there two weeks ago all morning to have a look at your paintings, I was just so thrilled to see your show and so uh, thrilled to be introduced to your work. Thank you. yeah. So um, my first question here is, um, why have you got the title Through Each Today for this show? Because you've got quite interesting titles, I think, for your work generally. And so why the title Through Each Today? Today, can you well, say a bit more? <clears throat> I had this tune going on in my head, um, and it was a song that I. Um, but we used to sing in kindergarten. I went to a convent, mm -hmm. and it was uh, Lord for tomorrow and its needs. I do not pray, but keep me, guide me, love me, Lord, just for today. And when I looked it up online, there had been placed just for today with through each today. And I thought that's a very succinct way to talk about uh, the moment. And, uh, and, the mo and then I started to think about how, I mean, my work actually just comes originally from a moment, a sort of um, uh, a compelling moment. I see something in the world, it's all from my experience. Uh, or even when I'm looking at the images I collect and I'm going through them, it'll be, a, it'll be just something compelling about that image that I want work with. And, uh, and then um, I 
started to think about things I've read about the moment, about eternity, about uh, this moment being the link with eternity, read it in books by C.S. Lewis, and then yesterday I was reading another book, and they referred to Ludwig Wittgenstein and eternity. So I looked him up actually yesterday, and, I, and so I got the quote, and it says, if we take eternity to mean not infinite temporal duration, but timelessness, that eternal life belongs to those who live in the present. And so I can feel that it looks like a serendipity of things coming together. Um, uh, and, and that's how I decided on the title. Mm -hmm. so it's quite compelling, I think, through each today, because when I first copied your title, I thought through each day, mm -hmm. and I really thought, oh, what's wrong? I saw through each today. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about the present. Yes, it refers. Thank you. That really uh, leads me to my next question, which is um, how does the church setting, so if the icons and the setting of the church itself um, formally and conceptually perhaps affect the work for you? Because it's, uh, yeah. Mm. I know, until you asked that, I read your question and I, and I, I hadn't really thought about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, other people. I tend to be a little bit tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. I just see what I want to see, and the surroundings really is out of out of my attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, honestly, it hasn't really struck me mm -hmm. personally. So because when I was asked to show you, I did the first thing I did. I took uh, the train from Ipswich because that's where I live, straight down here to this church and have a look. What 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 the hell do they <laughs> going to show it in the crypt? Because my work comes from working with the light, you know, and the daylight, and also I show my paintings just in the daylight. Yeah, so I just thought, yeah. how do you feel suddenly, you know, say, you're going to show it in the crypt opposite uh, Madame Tussauds, you know, how yes. did that have an effect? Well, the most uncomfortable thing is getting here you know, past Madame Tussauds. You know, all those crowds, mm -hmm. everybody is, I felt even today, it's like you're blocked, and you're frustrated, and there's a lot of people in the world. It's something yes. other. So coming here where people come to Later, it's even going to Sickle Chapel. Yeah. Um, it is an oasis of calm. And, uh, and that's what I know people have put comments in the book about they come in here to, to pray and then they're struck by this. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to get some feedback from people because you do work a lot on your own, in your own head a lot of the time. And uh, to, to see what other people see in your work is really um, encouraging. There have been their own associations, but they also have been affected. They get the feeling. It's interesting because when I got here two weeks ago, there was a couple with a guide walking around with a guardian guide in here, and they came just from Liverpool and they bought, bought the paper, the guardian on the tray, mm -hmm. and they read the guide and said, Oh, that's near near the station, <laughs> King's Cross, I used to when they got here. Yeah. And it was had exactly this effect you're saying. They just thought, oh, we're going to have a good, funky time in London. But before that, we read yeah. about your show. Yeah. And they came here and they were just absolutely enchanted. Wow. It had the same yeah. effect. You know, it's, you know, sort of, wow, it was really quite yeah. something. They didn't expect that. And it's nice to get it all out as a solo show. <laughs> I've shown one or two pieces on their own. Um, but to get them all together, you see a thread going through. Even if you're not consciously aware of it, there's a thread. For me, it's good to see it all out together. Mm -hmm. So when was the last solo show you had? Oh, actually, it was only last month. Last, last month. month. <laughs> okay. Um, because it just co I was a lot of this spent this mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and I was already was having a solo show mm -hmm. in um, Oxford, near Oxford. But the thing about it being near Oxford, it's too far away for a lot of people to come. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was a very nice space. Uh, they would let me have a, the work on consignment to, to put in the show, so it's made this a stronger show. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it takes a long time to get the body work together, so I didn't, uh, I didn't want to produce work specifically for this show, I wanted to work this ongoing. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, the first, first major solo show was uh, 2012, mm -hmm. and that was in the public eye, but that was also West London. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what's going on in London is in the East. Somebody said if they went that far west, they'd get a nosebleed. Mm -hmm. So you know, they, they really you don't get much 
serious footfall over there. So you're nearing the east. <laughs> I mean, people are very prejudiced, especially being in the church, I think. There's a kind of uh, fear, I think, you feel more prejudice or something. Um, just talking about, uh, about the, sh the show, the hanging itself, um, why are they hung? You know, in the sequence, I wondered, you know, because you already start with a painting out there yeah. and three works on paper out here. What, what made you decide to hang the work in the sequence? <clears throat> well, I put the one that was on the poster out in the corridor, mm -hmm. and then uh, my daughter came and uh, helped me, and I asked her to arrange it. Um, she has a great sense of style, and I quite like curators to curate the show. It's something I find. I hard to make decisions and uh, I like the, the way she did it. She, she said it's absolutely obvious to put it like this mm -hmm. and I have to agree. I mean these are very obvious to put to her anyway because it's the largest pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so I did particularly take responsibility. So do you like, just as a painter, do you like other people hanging your work? Mm -hmm. I do. Would you always have? Yes, more or less. Because are you sort of enchanted when you see it rehung by other people in a way that they, it, does it add something to it? Yes, it's like when someone writes about it, you, you, you see it through their eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really seeing it through their eyes. Mm -hmm. in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. I mean, even with the other show I had, I let the curator take mm -hmm. control. And he's, obviously, they'll say, if you're not happy. Yeah, the, my main, my main worry or my main focus is actually getting the work done. You know, everything after that is, is that's when I'm finished. Mm -hmm. So, how was it now? For example, your daughter in your work instead of a curator, your daughter you have in well, she's, um, she's studying at, at, at Wimbledon Art College, mm -hmm. so she has a good eye. Mm -hmm. She's quite decisive.